Welcome to the heart of the matter. It's our delight as presenters, both Omilola Oshikoya and myself, to bring you this episode. Our guest is Mr. David Awoni, um, and we're here to discuss a very vital subject, the subject of forgiveness. Um, what can forgiveness do in a person's life? Mr. Awoni, I would like to know, what is forgiveness? What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is to acknowledge that you are an aggrieved party in your interaction with your fellow men, but you have decided not to take revenge and not to and to forget about the matter so that relationship can be restored and move on. Okay. Now why is it so important? that we forgive others when we are aggrieved or offended or whatever it might be? It's so important f for several reasons. Forgiveness, first of all, is a commandment. It's a commandment of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says, we should bear with one another and forgive one another. If you have complaints against the other, forgive. Not because the fellow has even apologized. Forgive as Christ has forgiven us. So it's a commandment. Not to forgive is to disobey the word of God. Secondly, forgiveness, apart from being a commandment, is an antidote for, for bitterness. For as long as you harbor unforgiveness, there will be bitterness in your heart, and revenge does not even cure that bitterness like forgiving. Okay. And, and I'm told that if we allow bitterness to settle, yes. it can even become hatred. It will, it will become hatred and eventually the object of that offense, you might even want to eradicate it, at least to murder. I think for me, the. the the story that always um, sticks when I think of forgiveness in the Bible is Joseph. So Joseph was, I mean, um, abused by his brothers. He was sold, you know, and he went through a lot of things in his life because yes. of what his brothers did to him. Yes. But at a certain point, he was able to forgive. Yes. And I think that's very remarkable because in practical terms, Yes, we all know that we should forgive. It's really hard. I personally, there's, you know, there's someone that every time she's constantly doing things to me and not, at least on two occasions, I've actually called her and we've had a discussion. The first one, we've had it actually three times and the last one, she was very, you know, defensive and like, you know, like she couldn't be bothered. And so I've decided, to, normally that's how I resolve issues. I try and talk to you, okay, what is the problem? But she's constantly, I've done that three times and I'm tired, you know, and sometimes you see the person, you may even see the person in church and she won't even say hello and you have to say hello all the times. And so I find myself, I'm forgiving every week. Every time I see her, I'm forgiving. And it can be really annoying. How, how, how easy is it? I mean, for Joseph to have done it, then I don't have an excuse. You know, Jesus forgave me as well, but it's, it can be so difficult. What do you think, sir? The example of Joseph you gave is very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. If not because of that forgiveness, the state of Israel would not have been what it is today. In Genesis chapter 40, verse 15, Genesis chapter 40, verse 15, Joseph told the butler in prison, he said, I was stolen out of the land of Hebrew. And even here that I'm in prison, I'm here innocently. So his brother sold him. Potiphar and Potiphar's wife sent him to prison without excuse. Genesis 45, 15. When he confronted his brothers, he said, you sold me but God sent me. You thought you sold me, but God sent me. In the last chapter of the book of Genesis, Genesis 50, 20, the brothers now saw that Joseph might take revenge, 
they now cooked up the story. They said, Joseph, before our father died, he said, you should forgive us. And it was on that occasion that the prophecy came to pass. They actually bowed down to Joseph. And Joseph said, what you meant for evil, God has turned it to good. And it's very remarkable that Stephen, even as he was being killed in Acts chapter 7, verse 9, he referred to this example of Joseph, the one you mentioned. He said, our patriarch, out of envy, sold Joseph to Egypt. So Joseph knew it was out of envy. The Sino brothers knew it was out of envy. But for the plan and purpose of God to continue so that we can have a nation called Israel, he had to forgive. You know, when you said Joseph, um, or another, the, first, the Joseph that first came into my mind was Joseph, the husband of Mary. Because, you know, he had not slept with Mary. No. She, she'd become pregnant. Yes. And by all rights, he was entitled to put her away. In disgrace. In disgrace. But he kept her. Mm. And, and even though she had not committed any offense, no. he, was, he, 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 was, he only got to know that because God told him. Yes. You know. um, so now, now, have you got a story, sir, of forgiveness that you can share with, with, with us today? Yes, I have a personal story about forgiveness. It used to pain me, P-A-I-N, to forgive before. Before I became born again and shortly afterwards. It used to pain me. But now, by the grace of God, it now pays me to forgive. Okay, so that's P-A-Y-S. P -A -Y -S. <laughs> <laughs> so there has been transition from being pained to see that it now pays for me to forgive. And I really thank God for it because through the word of God, that transition has taken place. And this is how it has taken place. There is what I will call forgiveness activator or forgiveness kickstarter. That is, each time I know I'm, aggr I'm, I'm aggrieved, what is it that will enable me to consider forgiveness and not revenge? Before it used to be tit for tat. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. If you double me, if you tackle me, I double you. At the end, I'm not going to be not falling. I used to find sense in that before, until God intervened. It is not by chance that the two verses after the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, has to do with forgiveness. I thank God the way it was structured after a model prayer by Christ, it was forgiveness that was mentioned. Verse 14 says, if you, for, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. That to me has been the forgiveness kickstarter each time I feel aggrieved. That the book for forgiveness stops on my desk because of the consequences that will follow if I do not forgive. I began to realize through the word of God that I myself am not infallible, that I too, I offend people. And if I now reverse the role, that is, if I don't consider myself as the aggrieved person, if I consider myself to be the, the offender, how will I want God to treat me? How will I want the person I've offended to treat me. And in that light, I began to see a lot of, a lot of sense. For example, Psalm 130 verse 3 says, Psalm 130 verse 3, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? Which is very, very uh, uh, powerful. Please hold that thought. We're going to be back. We just need to go on the break. Viewers, stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment with the heart of the matter. Watch your favorite Heart of the Matter episodes online at www.theheartofthematter.tv Also check out exciting behind the scenes photos Leave your comments and like us on Facebook Welcome back to the Heart of the Matter We're talking about forgiveness with Mr. David Awoni so you were talking about your personal story. Yes. It's an interesting story when we were members of Youth for Christ. 
we had two Bell and Howell uh, projectors we were using to evangelize around. For some more reason, it is whenever I wanted to use them that one brother would just say you want to use them too. But upon checking, he would never use the first one or the second one. It was just to disturb my buying, uh, of my, my taking the, the projector to go and evangelize in the then Morocco before it was, uh, it was demolished. I felt aggrieved. And other people told me that this is an act of sabotage from this man. A member of our fellowship. Eventually, in Christmas time, he said he wanted to go and use it in his hometown and said armed robbers will lead them on the road and people believe he sold the projector. How did I react? Based on what, on what God has been doing with me on forgiveness, I was able to forgive him. Not only that, the next opportunity I had to be in London, I went to Tottenham Court Road, to a shop called Joseph, Joseph Shop, Tottenham Court Road. I then saw a projector. Bell and Howell, 1995. 500 pounds was the amount. It was a day before my coming back to Nigeria. I had only 250, 255 pounds in my hand. And I wanted this projector. I just said a simple prayer. God, you know what I need this projector for. It will be like icing on the cake of my forgiveness. I want to buy this for your kingdom. Those were not the days of uh, you know, computers then. Um, this was 19... 1985. So I simply went to the counter. I said, can I see your boss, please? The young lady said, what for? I said, I want to buy this uh, projector. He said, well, <laughs> the price is there. 500. You don't price things. Don't buy them like here in Nigeria. <laughs> but I insisted on seeing the boss. When the boss came down, I said, sir, you are the only one standing between me and this projector. He said, why? I said, well, I have 255 pounds. The price is 500 pounds. How do you help me out? He said, mm, he just turned around and looked at the, the screen. He said, do I want to know the story of the projector? I said, what do I need the story for? But because I wanted his favor, he didn't voice my objection. <laughs> I said, yes. He said, well, somebody traded this in because he wanted a front-loading um, um, VHF, a front-loading one. That his money was not enough. He brought this and added, and added money. He now said, well, in Tottenham Court Road as of today, this thing has been there for six months. The price of that space in Tottenham Court Road is more than 500 pounds. It's better we get rid of it and put the fast moving items. He said I should bring the 250 pounds. Wow. I was too excited. I gave him the whole money in my hand. He can't tell you, he said, we oh, have this. Because that was what I needed to take. But it was Gatwick we used to use then to take, <laughs> to take transport from, from Central <laughs> London to Gatwick. And that is very, the very first fruit of forgiveness that I saw. Mm. And it has encouraged me to today that when you forgive, there is, there is a price that God will give you. To have brought the price from projector from 500 pounds to 50, 50 pounds, it has encouraged me all along to forgive. Wow. So there is a fruit. There is a fruit of forgiveness. Of forgiveness. Yes. Um, uh, so it's, 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 it's not just that you have set the offender free. God also rewards yes. your forgiveness. Yes. And now, it enables ceasefire. You call for ceasefire immediately when you forgive. Even if the other person has not apologized. The fact that you have forgiven, you have initiated the process of what I call ceasefire. And then to restore communication that will have been watered down. Psalm 130 verse 3 has it to say, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? It means I, David, I will, you cannot stand. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 20 says, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Which means I should no longer be judging people by their bad action towards me and my good intention towards them. It should be that I myself can be aggrieved today, I may have grieved somebody tomorrow. Romans 3, 23, a popular verse says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when I began to see myself not solely as the agreed person, agreed person, agreed person, who must be apologized to, who must, who, must, who must forgive, it begins to shift my thinking by the word of God. And what are the consequences of this when I myself am the agreed person? The eye of the Lord is too holy to behold iniquity. It means in my sinful state as the offender, the eye of the Lord is too holy to look at me. Secondly, in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 to 2, 
Isaiah chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquity have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. And for as long as I harbor unforgiveness in my, in my heart, even the prayer, even the Lord's prayer will not be answered. Okay. So if I'm going to summarize what you've said so far, there are forgiveness triggers. Yes. Um, so that you remind yourself from scripture yes. and maybe from personal experiences yes. what God does or what, why forgiveness is so crucial yes. and important. Yes. Um, we've talked about forgiveness. How about unforgiveness? Do you have any questions on unforgiveness? Um, sometimes it is so painful. So it, is, it could be someone that is so close to you, not necessarily someone from afar. And you can't, you, like, like I use my own personal example, I try and forgive the person, but then the person keeps, how do you, um, a practical example, a practical way of actually forgiving that person without waiting for an apology. Because sometimes you expect that, okay, you discuss with the person, the person apologizes, then you can forgive. But there are some people that would just never apologize until God comes, you know. How do you then just forgive that person despite the pain? The example I will give is that of a very close friend of mine. Forgiveness was not in his dictionaries, in his dictionary in, the, in his early days as a Christian. He will not forgive. We used to call him John, the son of Zebedee. He was, he was exactly like, like, like those sons of, of Zebedee, as recorded in Mark chapter 9, verses 38 to 39. When they complained to Jesus Christ, we are the big 12 doing, 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 doing the deliverance and co. But there is somebody who is a casting out demons in your name. And we have, we forbade him, which means they actually, they must have used physical force to stop the person. And Christ said, no, there should be no sectionality in this matter. If it's not against us, it must be for us. Of course, later on, you know that when they were to pass through a Samaritan village, and those villagers did not support them, they said, with the effort, with the power you have given us, now we also can call down fire from heaven. Can we do it now and, and wipe out this, 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 uh, this uh, village and Christ? restrain them. So there was that unforgiveness in the life of this, my friend. So, so serious that even in his driving, it shows. He, he likes keeping the left lane only. He doesn't like being overtaken. He likes overtaking others. But his own, like you said, his own forgiveness trigger, or what I call forgiveness activator or forgiveness kickstarter, came one day through the help of God. He was driving a small beetle, and a car overtook him. I mean, for him, that was an offense under unforgiveness. He was not ready to forgive them. He leveled up. This was this of a manual, manual vehicle, B2. When you change from gear 4 to gear 3, it means you are about to, to increase speed. He leveled up with them and then leaned towards the right as far as he could and did this to the two occupants in the vehicle, only to discover that the passenger was his, the branch pastor of his church. So from this, he, changed, he quickly changed to this. But it was so dramatic for the pastor not to know. So he felt indicted for two weeks. For two weeks, he was dodging the pastor. He would deliberately come late to the church. He would avoid the gaze of the pastor while in service. And once they share the grace, he would leave the church for two weeks. But then he started asking God for forgiveness. He felt God forgave him after two weeks. But how about the pastor? Would the, would the pastor too have unforgiveness in, in his portfolio? So he surmounted college one day and went to see the pastor after service. The pastor said, ah, wait, I want to see you. He thought the pastor would descend like a ton of brick. Or to have called him to face the disciplinary committee or to sit at the back of the church. But the pastor did not do anything. So on his own accord, he had to go to the pastor, and the pastor just looked at him like this. They did not exchange any single word, but they were communicating. He, he did like this. The pastor looked at him again. He did like this. And from that time, unforgiveness 
was better handled in his, in, in, in his life. And Psalm 32 verse 1 became his own forgiveness trigger or forgiveness kickstarter. It simply says, blessed is he whose, for, whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Because of the way God forgave him and the pastor covered his sin from the congregation, he became a better Christian. And since then, he's been handled on forgiveness. So he, he will not even wait for any party, the other party to, to apologize before he forgives. Okay, I have another question. In terms of reconciliation, yes. um, if two people, someone hurts another person yes. and they forgive, yes. the, other, the offended forgives the offender, yes. does the relationship have to be restored in terms of, so if they're really good friends, um, does it have to go back to the way it was for you to know that you're really forgiven, but it, or is it okay to forgive but still try and, as even the Bible says, be as gentle as a dove but wise as a serpent, but still try and protect yourself? Uh, that's a nice question. Uh, I'll be very practical in the way I will answer it. Uh, there is a proverb in my language, Yoruba, that says, which means uh, once you have a scare, a wound in your hand, the scare will always be there. It will always be there. So you will always remember. Particularly if it's an embarrassing one, a very, very embarrassing situation, even when you have forgiven. But you just have to for, for, follow the example of Jesus, of, of God, that says, as for your sins, I will remember no more. I will remember no more. It's not that you won't remember, but you won't let it affect your relationship thereafter. You will remember. You will have the details, but you will so much manage it that it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't ever degenerate into you taking revenge or even reminding the person of, a, of, of, of his sins. Like, say, that was how you did two weeks ago, or have a diary of your friends and be referring to you continuously. You address it and then move on once and for all. Sometimes it's not even forgiving someone else, it's forgiving yes. yourself. Yes. Sometimes you may have done something and you just can't even understand how you did such a thing. Yes. And you can't, and you even know God has forgiven you, but you just can't forgive yourself. Yes. I think that's a harder form of forgiveness and trying to forgive yourself than forgiving someone else. Yes. How, how can someone also begin? the process of forgiving themselves? I will, I, will, I will just recap a little bit about, about that of John. It took him two weeks for him to forgive himself. It took him two weeks. Okay. He later told us immediately he, he, he asked God to forgive him. I mean, okay, God inducted him according to Psalm 105 verse 15. After doing this to the, to the, to, to the pastor, he said Psalm 105 verse 15, was highlighted in his heart. Touch not my anointed one, do my prophet no harm. So he felt indicted. But for two, he, he prayed immediately and he believed God had forgiven him. But for two, it took two weeks for him to forgive himself that God has forgiven him. So it may take time, it may take time for one to be, to be, to be penitent. But it will eventually go. Like Apostle Paul said, he said, I should be considered the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church. But later he said, look, forget about the things that are gone behind. Let me press towards the mark. He eventually forgave himself. Although he kept, he, he was remembering from time to time, I should be considered the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church. But forgetting about the things that are behind, <laughs> I pressed towards the mark. Some people will say, I can never forgive him for what he did to me. What would you say to such a person to help them get over it? they should consider the consequences of that statement on their own, on themselves. That is, it is not the offender they are punishing. It is themselves. Because God will now look at him and say, well, you are not following the steps I have set. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Christ has said in Colossians 3.13. If you have complained against each other, forgive each other. Not because the person has apologized. 
He said, just as Christ has forgiven you. So if you don't forgive, the, follow the example of Jesus Christ, it means that person, you know, is uh, being born again, is even questionable, and his prayer will not be answered. For if God should regard iniquity in his heart, the Lord will not hear him. So it doesn't matter how much one has been offended, it doesn't matter how long it has lasted for, let go. It pays you to let go. Can you look into one of our cameras and give a final word encouraging somebody who is on the other side of the camera who has held uh, an offense for a long time or, and is just unable to forgive? Please say some words of encouragement to them to encourage them to, to let go. My word of encouragement, if you have challenges of unforgiveness, is this. That it is you yourself that you will suffer more than the fellow you think has offended you. Because you are directly disobeying the word of God that says you must forgive. And if you don't forgive, iniquity is at your doorstep, which will bring a separation between you and God, which will not make his hand to help you, which will not make you to prosper, which will not make you to live in love, and God is love. So it is, it is you that suffers, not the other party. Don't wait for him or her to apologize. He may never do. Just follow the example of Colossians 3.13. If you have hurt against each other, just as Christ has forgiven you, so must you forgive, whether they apologize or not, so that you can move on. Viewers, it's been our joy bringing this episode of The Heart of the Matter to you. Um, Mr. Aoni, we're very grateful for you, having you with us. We'll be back again with another episode of The Heart of the Matter, same time, same channel, next week. Until then, stay blessed. Mm -hmm.